Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, I wanted to give you a chance to see a work in progress on an expansion to the end caps um, that I featured in a previous video. Um, these end caps are designed to uh, receive blank boards behind them to raise up the playing surface to about six inches in height and provide an interesting front to that new plateau. And if you haven't seen the end cap video, I recommend you go back and take a look at it as I discuss some of the design uh, problems and uh, possibilities for these pieces. Uh, but basically I've been under work on another five uh, 20 inch long sections and I've tried to incorporate some new um, uh, you know, rock facings, um, you know, utilizing some of the techniques that I was working on on the uh, proxy for Weathertop, uh, which I showed uh, a little bit more recently. So um, I'm just going to give you a little closer look at some of these, talk about some of the ideas that I have for them, and uh, give you a chance to see how much work has been done. So here you can see two of the 20 inch long sections. Now these, what I've tried to do is uh, deviate from the previous plans, which was to have them be uniformly joinable to any section uh, and make one unique join so that I can incorporate a longer cliff facing. Um, this cliff is, you know, ballpark three to four inches high and, um, you know, allowed me to do some more elaborate casting and some more elaborate shaping of the face of the cliff than would be possible if I were to try to keep it only on a 20 inch long section by itself exclusively. One of the plans for this project is the potential down the road to have, <clears throat> excuse me, is to have a bridge. Uh, the customer has um, a set of six inch rope bridges. Can't remember the manufacturer. If I can find it, I'll include a, a link in the description. Um, but the thought was to have a platform for the bridges to come off and then have a, a pylon, a pillar, an extended um, self-contained, uh, you know, sort of cliff column that then it would join to and then have the next bridge come off of that so that you could have a say 15 inch gap between plif, uh, between the plateau and cap facing something in that range. The exact details haven't been finally worked out. Once I finish this we'll begin on the other side and, and the center piece but um, what I've done to try to increase the distance in front of this uh, between this and the future work that will be placed here to receive the bridge is to undercut the cliff facing, have it hang out a little bit so that I could walk in this uh, edge here to create more of a believable gap when the future piece is placed. One of the challenges that I, I noticed is that um, it's difficult to undercut it much more than I've done so and still have it look believable. This walks back you know, at the bottom, probably about, I'm going to say an inch and a half, almost maybe, well, no, it's probably closer to two, maybe two and a half inches um, from the, you know, this is receded two and a half, two maybe from uh, this top point. And I think if I go any more extreme than that, it's going to look, you know, a little bit too much of an overhang. It might not be believable why the rocks haven't just, you know, sort of crumbled off through weathering. You may notice that this gap is really irregular at this point. And what I've decided to do is overhang the rocks a little bit more from the edge so that I can sand them to get hopefully about as tight as seam as I can. Once I do that, I'll go in and I'll score and chip out some of this rock to try to blend these areas a little bit more together. Um, it's not going to be a perfect seam, of course, but I think it should be pretty believable. And um, I think it's a, it's a well worthy sacrifice uh, to incorporate this rather elaborate um, rock facing. One of the things that I liked about you know some of these casts is having them kind of coming in. You'll often notice when rocks are weathered, uh, not weathered, I'm sorry, when they are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Tectonically upheaved, you know, uh, over years, the crust of the earth folds and, and bends. And so you often get stratification that will come in at slants and just a little bit more by chance than anything else. This really has some of that feel where it's kind of sloping down and you get a sense of some movement in the granite, you know, or the bedrock over, over eons. And I really liked that effect. So I'm very pleased with how this has come out so far. And, uh, oh, cat. And uh, definitely um, looking forward to, you know, 
painting this up and adding in some effects to really bring it out uh, as a finished product. And so here you can see another two uh, pieces with a more, you know, with one of the more uniform joins. And it showcases a couple of the things that I'm, I'm trying to do with these to differentiate them from the first set a little bit and add some more variety. So in this piece, I've put in, you know, a single large rock, um, a couple large pieces and left it, you know, open in other spots. Try to add a little variability to it. And on this piece here, what I've done is I've actually reseated this cliff face back a ways from the front. You know, have a small, you know, abutment coming out here. And my goal is this, combined with the other two pieces I just showed, is going to help create a really nice undulation across the facing of these pieces as you look down the length of the table, which I think is going to add a lot of realism to it and, and some more visual interest. Obviously, you know, I have a lot more um, work to do um, spackling in some areas with some sculpt mold and, um, you know, smoothing out some transitions. So this is far from ready to be uh, sanded and painted, but it gives you a sense of where um, this is going. One of the things that I have tried to do on these pieces is do quite a bit more extensive work, you know, smoothing these joins and sanding this. What I found is that it's, uh, it's a, quite a challenge to get these pieces to glue um, with a nice, you know, vertical side. Um, what I do is I, um, you know, apply glue, stack the foam layers up, then I put weights on top of them to press them down to get, you know, a good tight bond, good tight gaps in all across the, the facing. But what can happen is glue acts as a lubricant, and it tends to cause these pieces to, oh, mm, cat, get, 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 get. And it causes the pieces to just drift. Now we're talking about a sixteenth an eighth of an inch drift. We're talking some very minor amounts. That sometimes it's hard for me to catch as it sits over time. But that can cause this end to be out, you know, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. And then this piece down here receded in, perhaps, so it, on the other end it'll be, you know, sticking out. And that creates a little bit of a, of a tip. So by sanding them, I'm at risk of shortening the pieces, and I think I mentioned this before, of bringing that overall dimension in a little bit too tight. And building these areas up, I'm a little bit unsure of and keeping them with a, a nice vertical uh, plane. So I've done some more careful sanding, and I'm going to look at that a little bit more closely as I go forward. Um, because I get some practice on leveling and sanding, which is going to be unavoidable in these pieces. If you see here, I've marked this one-eighth of an inch and two-eighths of an inch down here on the corner. That's because these foam pieces were just a hair thinner than normal and when you stack four up you can start to get more uh, you know the gaps begin to accrete and then you end up with a much much stronger gap at the total piece so this is actually an eighth of an inch short and two eighths of an inch short down on this end so I'm going to have to build this area up just a little bit which will give me an opportunity to you know smooth this transition but then I'm going to have to sand that flat and bring it up to the full six inch height it's going to be, I think, a little bit of a challenge, and I don't want to rush that because I want to get it right. Um, but uh, what I'm planning on doing is building that up with some uh, sculpt mold. Once that's dry, sand that down, and I think the sculpt mold is sandable enough that it, it should uh, be relatively easy to take down extra material, and it should be resilient enough that it's going to provide a nice top coat on there and be strong enough and probably even more protective than the original foam on the top. So that's an added bonus to that kind of work, but that is a challenge that I'm going to be undertaking on all of the pieces, as all of the pieces are at least an eighth of an inch short, and prob and some of them almost three eighths short, which can be, you know, that's a significant gap visually if you were to stack boards behind it, so it is something that has to be corrected. I think what happened is this foam board that I cut all of these pieces from was probably, uh, you know, a sixteenth varying you know, thinner than a normal board. And of course, when you stack that up, if you stack four, you can get two eighths, right? Uh, four sixteenths, two eighths um, coming up. So in any case, um, that gives you a sense of some of the work that's been done, some of the design uh, difficulties that are inherent in this kind of a project, and uh, some ideas on how I'm going to tackle them.
So once again, that gives you a, a quick look at the work that's been done. Um, and I'm going to probably be, um, you know, doing some, also I should have mentioned some additional work on that um, cliff area where there's that join because um, it might be possible, I'm going to use a few casts of, of some rocks and some sculptable to see if I can build that ledge at the very, very top out just a little bit. Uh, originally I had carved it down just a little to kind of add some undulations to that piece and um, you know looking back on it I'm gonna want to try to six inch it as perfectly as I can and bring it forward as much as I can off the face um, to make the uh, future bridge join as feasible as possible uh, and you know as, as most I as interesting as possible really is what I'm talking about I want to you know sort of make that promontory you know look really visually interesting and then the uh, bridges are actually rope bridges that go over it and they're really nice rope bridges as well so like I said I'm gonna see if I can find a picture of those and uh, show them to you and the, so look for that link in the description notes so um, keep your eye on the channel of course when um, progress is made on these or when they're finished I'll be back show you some of the vegetation that I've put on them uh, some of the final comments on some of those challenges that I have and give you a chance to see that final look so thanks for watching I really do appreciate it feel free to leave comments down in the description uh, or comments in the comments section down below and if you have any questions of course you can always private message me through YouTube or email me it's Mike at Terrencecapes.com thanks and I'll talk to you again soon